Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stock Dirty to Me, the number one podcast for you to learn about stock. We're breaking down some amazing stocks today. We got, of course, the amazing Tony from this. Uh, sorry, the Stock Bros podcast. Wow, I'm, I'm, my brain's fried. And we got Dalt, the, an advisor at Benton Corp Capital. And of course, you got me, the podcast mogul, just trying to wrangle these two information hounds, if you will. To give us things and Dalt, what are you eating? <laughs> Peanuts. <laughs> Don't mind Dalt. He's going to eat the entire show, and we'll yeah. take care of this. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, let's go, yes, Arthur. Let's go. Let's go. If you're watching, Sabrina, thank you for showing. Me. Let us know you're showing up to the live stream with a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. We got a full show to you. Uh, Hold up. First show. Of all, what are we drink? What are you guys drinking today? I don't even have, have any to, beer in the house. It's like a diet. You have to continue. Oh my God. We have so to continue. Hurting. I know. I'm on a 30 day clan. I'm on a 30 day clan. the tradition. As soon as I finish this video, I have to go out and get beer. That's why I, I just I'm, have to. I don't have any alcohol either, and I have to break open a bottle of wine. Like, God. come on. Oh, Sandra and wants to know what are you I drinking, did it Tony? So that we can continue this tradition. I didn't know you guys were going to not drink. I All right, know. hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'm going to jump off. You guys, tell them tell them something. I'm going to go get whiskey. God damn it. Right, right. We can't continue until you have something in your hand. It's not so, even a full-size Diet Pepsi. It's one of the mini cans. It's very embarrassing. That is very embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. Terrible t- today. <laughs> so did we just lose the host? Or we? What's going we on? Did, yeah. No, I went camping on the weekend, so I brought all the beer I had with me. Oh, all right. All right. Um, so after I drank it all camping, I came back, and now all I have left is this little thing of trail trail mix. It's very saddening. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm all I have in the house is trail mix. I don't have anything in the house. Barely alive. Everybody, yes, COVID couldn't keep me away. Sandra, uh, Sabrina, sorry. I love seeing that COVID can't keep anybody away. You're one of our favorite people to be in the show, so thank you. Got people saying, hey, Tony, rocket ships and all that. Look, I got my Jameson, okay? Jesus, breaking my 30 day cleanse here. But it's worth it because we're on the stock. Right. I forget. Stock you, dirty man. to me. You tried. You I tried. tried. Next tried week, dirty. next week, I will redeem myself. I'm going to have like one of those next uh, yeah, king cans. Well, yeah. Week you 40 ounces to just, just, just to make up for missing this week. There you next go. Week yeah. You're going to do keg scan. There we go. Keg stands to make up for this. It's unacceptable. <laughs> Everybody, make sure you have your drink so that Tony doesn't get mad at you. Uh, be it water, be it whiskey, be it wine, because Tony's fancy. Or your drug of choice. I don't. I don't really do drugs, but you know, if you if that's your as thing, long as it's legal. It. Yeah, yeah. If that's your as thing, go legal. for it. You know. Yeah. So. Uh, How is everybody's stocks doing this week? You guys up, down, left, right, center? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I'm. <laughs> I haven't. To be honest, I haven't really looked. I sent you the screenshot. Yeah, you did send me that the screenshot. Was the first which first time that I looked. I, I maybe looked twice this week. Um, I know one day I was up, one day I was down, one day I was up. I don't know what the hell happened. We'll see. We'll Roll see. I, I wait till Friday, till the end of Friday, then I evaluate what happened for the week because anything can happen. There's still two days left. So. Looking like someone's going to rip a bong in our honor. Thank you uh, for that. <laughs> yes. um, we got. Can anyone tell me how I'm going to hit myself? I sold Hood at the end of the day, thinking it's going to tank tomorrow morning. It's all right. We're going to be talking Hood, so you're you're safe there. And if you want your name shown up, make sure you allow Streamyard. There's a little link at the top. Just click it. Allow Streamyard so that we can see your names. And we got someone saying it's legal here in Arizona. I know it's legal in Arizona. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, apparently, in Arizona. Here, it's legal here in Canada. For a yeah, while. world, st- uh, coast to coast and north to south. That's how we like to do it. We do it all at once. We don't do it piecemeal by province. No. That was Mark. That was Mark that said he's going to hate himself for selling Robin Hood. Don't worry about it, Mark. Charles, got, you, what's up, Charles? Let's go. Yes, right, Charles. Yeah. Love it. We got a great group in here. So Remember, with, uh, you want to go at Robin Hood first? Yeah, let's. Uh, since the the crowd is asking for Robin Hood, I'll bring it up on the screen right now. Here we go, Tony. Talk yeah. to us about the Robin of the Hood. Yeah, so we had a nice big jump this week. It was up like seventy percent after it had a horrible, horrible debut. Um, does this really mean anything? In my opinion, not really. It's just one of those hype jumps. I would say it's not really based on any financial information. So the financial information you have up on the screen, that is from quarter two of this year, right? 
Is that March? Uh, that is March 2021 and March 2022. You provided. Uh, so, yeah. So we haven't seen the the latest financial report yet. I think that should come out this month, right? When's the next uh, financial reports coming out for Robinhood? Anybody know? Here, let me just check it right now. I think I think it just might not be on Google, but it might be on Yahoo Finance. Yeah, while you're looking that up, I'll talk about what's going on with Robinhood. So, Robinhood debuted. Uh, was it last week, or was it Monday? I don't know. I lost track of days now. <laughs> Everything just seems to blend together lately. Um, so they just they just had last a debut. Week. What's that? It was last week. Yeah. So they debuted last week and. They debuted as the worst ever performance for an IPO of that evaluation. So they were valued at $35 billion and they had the worst ever debut day of any company evaluated at that price or higher, uh, which is they were, they finished the day down eight and a half percent almost is like 8.4%. So I think the, the biggest problem with investing in Robinhood is 81% of their revenue comes from them selling its customers order flow data, which is pretty crazy that they're relying that heavily on order flow data and they don't have too much revenue from other services or from financial advisor services or their margin accounts or their $5 Robinhood gold memberships, almost the entirety of their revenue comes from order flow data. And that has actually been made illegal in several countries around the world. Now I know the UK, um, Canada, Canada, the UK, Australia, it's actually illegal to do that. All Commonwealth apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Every single country is Commonwealth. This June, uh, the SEC just said it was conducting a broad, examination of the market structure, including the payment for order flow. And Robinhood said in their S1 filing that if the SEC banned this practice, it would have a huge potential risk for its business model. Well, no shit, because 81% (laughs) of your revenue is from that. So if that were to happen, I would probably surmise it's not going to happen because this is America and it's capitalism. So we're going to make sure that we put politicians in place that will support keeping this around. Probably. Okay. Lobbyists. That's just my opinion, by the way, I don't have any evidence of that, but my opinion is that it's probably not going to be banned and it's probably going to be safe, but it's very concerning that that much of their revenue comes from that. And to better break down what that means, I'll leave that for Dalt because uh, it's a little confusing. A lot of people may not understand what I'm talking about. So can you break down what that means for them to sell their order flow data? Oh, I was hoping to boy to boycott this one. I really wasn't joking. <laughs> um, hey, Steve, welcome to the show. Remember, if you guys are watching live, we're talking about Robin Hood right now. Dalt's going to give us some information, but please let us know your questions in the comments. Dalt, uh, good luck. So yeah, the process of selling order flow is they're selling uh, customers' orders. So the majority of, cu- of customer orders that are routed through Robinhood never actually hit a stock exchange. Uh, they hit market makers like Citadel first. Um, so that is where all of your, basically all of your, um, all of your orders that you submit through Robinhood are going to um, large institutions and hedge funds um, that can support that that volume and uh, uh, the volume on Robinhood is average account or median account on Robinhood is is two hundred dollars I think so two hundred forty dollars yeah so yeah. basically any hedge fund on Wall Street even the smallest ones can pretty much take up that volume that's coming out of there there's not a lot of money in uh, trading vol- volume so basically they're just picking apart those trades and they can see those 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 trades that they have routed and they can sit on them they can front run them they can do a lot of things with them it's uh yeah i think the most the most concerning thing about investing in robin hood is 2020 was probably one of the best years they'll ever have based on how many new customers they got and the circumstances in the market this is just my opinion i could be wrong but 2020, they had a net revenue for the entire year of $7 million net. 
Now, if you're a financial brokerage and you're dealing with billions of dollars or trillions of dollars in assets, that's kind of concerning when you're only producing $7 million of revenue. And this year they were fined by the SEC. Oh, profit. Profit, you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this year they were they were fined by the SEC, what, $70 million? <laughs> so they were fined 10 times their profit from last year. They do have a lot of cash on hand, which is obviously saving them. Um, but 2021, their latest financial reports, they lost, what is it, 1.5? Uh, Net income was $1.44 billion. Negative. Negative, negative $1.44 billion, right? So they lost $1.44 billion in the first quarter of this year. So that's pretty concerning because you would think that they would have a net positive based on how many customers they've been picking up and how many people are investing. But the biggest problem they have is their average customer doesn't spend a lot of money. They don't. These are a lot of new people that are starting out with investing. They don't have a ton of money. The average, the average account, like Dalt said, the median account is two hundred and forty dollars in a Robinhood balance, and the average is five thousand dollars. So five thousand dollars is a pretty low amount of money to have invested. So that's typically new investors, and once people tend to get to five thousand dollars, they're gonna, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't know if I want to keep my money in this. That this is actually what I did when I hit like seven thousand dollars back. I, I don't remember. I think it was probably about 7,000. I transferred over to Fidelity about a year ago because I was concerned to have my money in um, a company that I couldn't actually call them if I had a problem. You know, it's $7,000 I could lose if there's no phone support. And I don't know if they upgraded that because I don't have Robinhood anymore. But that's very concerning where you have to send an email and wait five days to hear back if you have a problem. So I Yeah, I wouldn't want to wait that long. Yeah, so I think when people hit five thousand dollars, they're like, "All right, I'm going to transfer over to TD, uh, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, whatever, to a more reputable, established, established brokerage." And to put it in perspective for you, the final thing I'll say is, Robinhood has eighty billion dollars under asset or assets under management. To put that into perspective of how little that is, a company like Fidelity has ten point four trillion dollars under management, assets under management. So they can afford to not do the order flow, flow payment and they can they make a ton of money off financial advisory services and uh, management fees for mutual funds and all kinds of other services and banking and whatever. Just and, and so they can yeah, they have so many assets under management that they can make a ton of money off of those assets. Where Robinhood's only at 80 billion, which sounds like a lot, but if you look at all of the other financial brokerages, assets under management, it blows away Robinhood. It's not even close. They're so far ahead of them. So, Dalt, there is a question in the comments and uh, maybe Tony can answer it as well. Someone's asking, what is a Citadel? Is it like a cartel? I highly <laughs> doubt it's like a cartel. Well, it could be like a cartel. They won't kill you, I think. Well, it's a hedge fund. Right. Oh, it's a hedge fund. Okay, yeah. so a Citadel is just simply a, a yeah. hedge fund. It's a cartel that won't kill you, but they'll take all of your money if they have the chance. So they're mostly they're mostly a market maker. They are a, they are a hedge fund, but they're mostly a market maker. So they're yeah. they're there to stand in between two. Um, if you were to take Citadel out, the market would fall apart. I think um, I forget what the number is. It's something ridiculous. Over fifty percent, though, I think sixty percent maybe of all trades go through Citadel. So uh, they're, de they're basically, they're taking long positions on all, everybody that's short. They're taking short positions on everybody that's long. And they're standing there to make sure that liquidity is up is upheld. Um, every now and then they can, they can speculate, but they have to do that totally separate from their market making um, business line. So um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of complicated, but I know there aren't they a, a major investor in Robinhood, or they supply them with a certain amount of revenue. I could be totally oh that wrong. yeah they supply them with a certain amount of revenue yeah yeah yeah. So someone did just mention, but the big guys from CNBC are buying the hood. They say they are making money. Great. Yeah, 
I don't know why. I, honestly, I haven't. I, I've been so bad at following what's happened this week in the stock market. I've been so busy. I have barely looked at my own portfolio. And I did see Robinhood did jump up 70%. I sent you guys a screenshot on that. I don't know why they jumped up. I, I don't have a good reason for it. It's NBC. <laughs> yeah. It might have been freaking Jim Cramer telling people to buy it. Who knows? Like, but I'll tell you that right now, as of right now, it's a horrible investment. And the thing to remember is just because a stock goes up in price, it doesn't mean that it's a good company. AMC. I mean, we, yeah, we see it all the time. We Are see you it hurting it? Are you hurting an AMC yet? Yeah. If not, buy Robinhood and you can get another chance to hurt. Um, Adam, really good. Now that Webull does fractional shares, I definitely don't see a need for Robinhood. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Webull and Public and Fidelity, there's companies that do fractional shares. I think Fidelity is the most reputable one, honestly. But I do use Public and I've never had a problem with them. I really like them. It's a good app for beginners. But um, yeah. So. Dalt. Dalt, is that the doggy? Yeah. I'm trying to get <laughs> so, away from the window so it doesn't start barking. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, Pitbull Lab. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. So uh, I do need to let you know, there were some people last week who were a little disappointed that they didn't get to see the puppy. So just letting you know, we may be getting comments to see the yep. puppy. Dalt does so. nothing but let us down. No alcohol, <laughs> no puppy. Well, Dalt is the advisor. He's the licensed one, so he has to have some area of uh, yeah, professionalism. Yeah, credibility. Otherwise, we're just yeah. <laughs> Two guys talking about yeah, stocks. We're and... Just a bunch of idiots talking. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So we do have other people here with some questions. Wait, where sure. is it? Um, we have Sean, who's like, it seems like once people get on any social network and read about Robin Hood, as well, it's never good. So they leave. It's true. Everything. Yeah. Uh... I'll tell you this about Robinhood because I used it for like a year. Um, the app is really easy to use. Uh, as someone that was a beginner, it, it was helpful to use it because I didn't understand anything that was going on. I did one of those things where I just jumped on and started buying things and didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, like most of that, us do. And that's yeah, why you're. That, you're... It's really easy to use. It's simple. They have fractional shares. But as you become more experienced and you learn about investing and you start to understand what you're doing, you realize like, oh, there's no phone number. Like, what if I have a problem? There's no one to contact. Like, I have to send an email and I did this and wait five, 10 days for, for a response, especially when COVID hit. Uh, when oh, we their, started their response time must have went through the roof. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I can't set a beneficiary if I die. Rob, yeah, you my money. can't add a beneficiary. It's, Which is very important. By the way, anybody who has a stock portfolio, insurance portfolio, or anything like that, no. make sure you have a beneficiary yeah. because, or else the government just takes it and has fun with your money. Most of the time, if you have a reputable brokerage, like like a top, top <laughs> echelon one, you you know your family probably will be able to get the money, but it's just a hassle if you don't if you don't put a beneficiary, you know, you don't want to have to deal with that. You don't want to have to have your family deal with that. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's more of an app than a brokerage. That's what I'll say about it. There we go. All right. So where are we moving? We got a couple other stocks that you guys want to talk about. You want to do um, Abby, Abby, mm, you could lead off. Here we go. I'll bring that up on the screen. T yeah. Dalt, this is your take on Abby V. Abby V. All right. Um, AbV used to suck <laughs> big time. AbV used to suck big time. Um, they got they got lucky. They got that buyout of uh, Allergan. Yeah, and um, that saved them. So if you look at revenue from 2017 to 2019, uh, it's it's pretty flat. I think it went something like 27 to 32 billion to 33 billion in 2019. They were starting to get a little uh, sluggish. 2019, they get that buyout of Allergan, and 2020, uh, they had big numbers as everybody stayed at home and pumped filler and Botox into their face. So <clears throat> that's um, a big... just someone is asking what they do. So they're a pharmaceutical company, correct? Yeah, yeah. Their their biggest they're... product is a Humira. Yes, yeah. so everybody's heard of the seen those commercials about Humira. It's an autoimmune disease drug. So yeah. That's their top top echelon like marquee product. So, yeah. 
yeah that uh they've had that for for a while though but a lot of that a lot of the new growth is is coming from um is coming from uh the these cosmetic fillers uh juvederm and botox which were two key products from allergan that they swallowed whole um so botox just continues to get bigger and bigger i'm always surprised now i remember back when i was in um high school and university um nobody was getting um filler nobody was getting uh botox and now you have women in in high school and university getting botox and filler so a lot has changed uh so this market is just going to continue to 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 grow and uh swallowing algin hold help them out help them out a lot uh unfortunately though their balance sheet is still kind of suffering so they do have some issues that quick ratio for abv is below one which means that they have more current liabilities than current assets which means that they are dangerously close to um not being able to pay their short-term bills as long as they're having cash cash flow come in um that will be okay uh, but they need to start um, finding a way to unwind those current liabilities and um, shore up some more free free cash flow, or else it's going to be a it's going to be a severe problem. Um, but as I said, the growth in that market um, for the Allergan products that they that they swallowed up, the growth in that market is tremendous. It's it's a multi billion dollar industry in itself, and I think as time goes goes on, more people. Um, it seems like everywhere I go around here, at least in Ontario, so anywhere in the GTA from Toronto out to Hamilton, where I am, um, every city I'm in has some kind of Botox or or filler bar, beauty bar, where you can get um, lip filler, face fillers, all over kind of fillers, and and bo and Botox. So it's 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 growing pretty big. Um, I like I like Abvi for that reason. I I was. Back in the day, I was always looking at getting a position in in Allergan, um, so I, I did like those comp that company's products. Abvi has some other products that they offer now. I, I'd I'd love to see them streamline a little bit and uh, try to focus on the products that are selling more. Excellent, Tony. You have anything you want to add to Abvi? I was just looking up their their debt ratio. It looks like their debt's not bad. I mean, it's under one uh they do have 85 billion in, in long-term debt but uh, i'm seeing their ratio is 0. 0.7 so i mean it's not horrible but the weird thing about them is when you look at their earnings reports every other um quarter it's weird because they'll have a net income of like 3 billion and then the next quarter it'll be like 36 million and then the next quarter is 4 billion and then the next quarter is like 700 million it's like it's strange how it it's fluctuates up and down so drastically like that they're, they're getting hit with some some special charges still that i think they oh, okay. uh, they pushed down down the road because allergan was uh uk based um so when they swallowed that up it became a us uh abvi now it became a us wholly owned entity so i think they're facing some some yeah so they push down the road i'll i'll say the final thing about abvi is the enticing thing about them is their dividend so they do have a, a four and a half percent dividend yield and they're they pay five dollars and twenty cents per share per share per year uh the concerning thing is that their dividend payout ratio is 167 percent so they're paying out over 100 almost 200 percent of their actual profits to dividends but they're able to do this because they have a lot of free cash flow so if you take into account their cash flow from from what I'm reading, it looks like it's only about 47% of their total revenue stream with their cash flow. But that's obviously not something that's sustainable. But this was this was strange to me. So I looked at some dividend stocks like Coca-Cola to see what their payout ratio was. And they did have a year in 2017 where their payout ratio was 500% which is insane, like five times their profit. But then they but then they recovered and they went down to 100, then 90, then 80. So they've been around like between 80 and 90 now. So I would say it's probably not super concerning. And AbbVie has been a very reliable dividend stock for a while now. So 
I, I think it's pretty safe dividend wise. They might cut it a little bit, maybe maybe a half percent or one percent. But if you're buying it just for dividends, I I don't know. I I I am a big proponent of if you're gonna invest in dividend, or if you're gonna do a dividend investing, just buy high dividend ETFs. So because that way you're protected, and all the companies aren't gonna cut their dividends. So you're always gonna have something, but. Uh, it is a it is a pretty safe dividend stock if that's what you're into. So we did see that Sandra just asked Mr. Buffett <clears throat> picked up a bunch, correct? Oh, did he? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. We let can me Google. Google. Let me Google that quick. Yeah, we'll see. And uh, while Dalt is uh, doing that, uh, Arthur is asking: Is there going to be a crypto giveaway this week? I believe yes. so. Every, yes, week. every every week on the show, as long as you comment, we'll go through the adult will go through the comments and pick a random comment and you will win a chance at some crypto. Um, someone was someone did mention that they've been crushing it like 12 days in a row for Abby V. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not a bad investment. I don't think it's a bad investment. I just I mean, they do make money. They, I mean, they do have net income, but. And they are a reliable dividend stock and they have good, you know, name recognition or name brand products that a lot of people use. But and Buffett is in there, but he's yeah. he's also loaded up with Bristol Myers, Merck, Pfizer. So those those are all huge dividend stocks. Yeah. They're for which the, is so yeah. weird, by the way. Is there for the Warren dividend. Buffett is loaded up on dividend stocks and he hates dividends, but he owns so many dividend stocks. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? He loves dividends. I don't know yeah. where 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 it came out that that he he hated them. He he loves them. He he refused to invest in tech in Apple or Amazon for years. He refuses to. Yeah. So I watched an interview with him where he refuses. He thinks giving dividends is a waste of money because he's like, I can use your money better. I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to offer any dividends. But yet, um, Berkshire Hathaway has so many dividends stocks like coca-cola at this point why do you have so much coca-cola like, oh simply I mean, because they give him money well that's he makes I, millions and, he and he's I, always I, drinking a coke at the annual shareholder meeting he makes millions of dollars in dividends every it's year awesome. millions of dollars without selling anything so just from dividends Jesus. i mean it's not i'm not knocking it i'm just saying it's funny how i watch an interview about him talking about that and he says he doesn't believe in paying dividends out because he feels like he can use that money and better, he can put it to better work uh, for more resources rather than paying back a portion of the profits to shareholders. That's but, true. but yeah, look, he, if I had, if I had Berkshire he, Hathaway, yeah. I would not be worried about dividends <laughs> yeah. at that point. Uh, someone is asking us about uh, Moderna and our thoughts on Moderna. Who was saying what about? He said, I was saying that about Moderna. No, I was saying that about oh this person. I don't know who they are. Oh, I guess so you weren't you weren't talking about Abzi. You were talking about Moderna, Warren loading up on that. Is that what they mean? I have um, no idea. I don't know. Is he it, does have yeah. He does have um. He does have Bristol Myers Squibb and some other uh, medical or pharmaceutical companies in the portfolio. So I want to just know. shout out this person loving our podcast. Thank you so Thank much you. for Thank tuning you. in each week. Glad we could help you. Uh, remember, if you're here live, make sure you use the hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. I did post in the uh, comments just a bit up how to uh, get your name shown up. On the top of the description of this video, there's a little link that says streamyard.com slash Facebook. Click on that. That's going to give um, uh, StreamYard permission to show your name on the streams. Um, we, there's Adam, he's, uh, live. Yes. I love it. Love seeing the lives here. Uh, they, this person was curious about your thoughts on Moderna. Uh, I honestly don't know enough about Moderna to give any, uh, qualified thoughts, but maybe Dalta's. What did Moderna do before coronavirus? <laughs> That's a good question. I never heard of them until then. So. What are they going to do after coronavirus? No. Corona I mean Delta. I don't know. Uh, I, I would say I would go with uh, Pfizer if you're like, if you're going to pick the, the stock one over the other. I'd go with Pfizer. I would go with Pfizer too. If they can raise the dead, they can certainly 
uh, make a good stock. And if you don't understand that joke, you're a little too young. Well, uh, that moving being, on. That being said, though, goddamn, Moderna makes a lot of money. <laughs> now, <laughs> now they do. Yeah, the they made round. a lot of money this quarter. But yeah, uh, this person is, a, they're making a shitload of money. No, a fuck yeah, ton. They did, yeah. Oops. Um, live thank you for showing us here on the live showing us the live thank you tracy for tuning in love seeing your faces here sabrina always in the comments um guys uh what's the next stock we want to talk about are we going to uh the book of faces or are we going pow 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 you want to you want to lead off pow tony oh, oh boy do i yes. <laughs> oh god here we go uh, bringing it up on the screen right now guys this is ammo inc aka pow is the ticker yeah. number so this is one I never heard of until it won this poll, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of it until it won the poll. So I was like, all right, I have to look into this now. So this is an ammo company that um, <laughs> someone commented, pow, pow. Love it. <laughs> I wish I had a sound effect that went pow, 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 pow. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, so they were founded in 2016. Um, and they're expected to have their first ever profitable quarter this quarter. So I don't, I don't think their earning reports are out yet for this quarter. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I did look at the last quarter and they did lose uh, about $500,000 in net income. They had $22 million in sales in revenue. Um, and they, they had a net income of negative 500,000, but they are trending up. Um, I'll say that. For those of you that don't know what it is, it's an ammo store in Arizona, apparently, and they sell ammo to military, police, um, for hunting, whatever, etc. Private use, whatever you need and, ammo for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the concerning thing is, people. the concerning thing is, they've done nothing. They've been pretty much flatlining until COVID hit, and everybody wanted to buy guns all of a sudden. Um, even people that hated guns, uh, some of my friends that I had that that hated guns and can't stand guns, even family members, then they all of a sudden wanted to get guns because, uh, <laughs> because well, I can scared. understand yeah. COVID. Everybody yeah. was thinking it was the end of the world. So, so my concern is I don't know if these huge jumps in profit are sustainable. Like if it's just one of these things where we're going through a phase right now and People are scared. People are buying guns and ammo. I don't know if that's if they're going to be able to, to sustain these type of revenue jumps every single quarter and increase these every year, year over year. Uh, I would probably, I, I honestly don't know. Like, I don't know what to make of this. I'm not going to buy any of it. Uh, I, I can't say you're an idiot if you do buy it. I just don't know. I don't, I can't tell you if their revenue is going to keep going up or not. I'm not sure. What are your thoughts though? Uh, I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, will, I, I will. I just wanted to add one other thing um, to the Abvi before because that one, there's a lot more to it. Um, I am very bullish on the assets that they picked up from Allergan that are now in their in their repertoire. Uh, I just want to stress that enough that the um, cosmetic industry moving forward. I'm extremely bullish on it, and Abvi could catch that wave. I'm just going to read you three, um, three stats here, and uh, it just so happens that this one focuses on women, but there are plenty of men as well that get cosmetic treat, treat treatments as well. So just listen to to this. At the age of 13, 53 percent of American girls are unhappy with their bodies. It grows to 78 percent by the time girls reach 17. 50 percent of teens as a whole, are self-conscious about their bodies, 26.2% report being dissatisfied. By age 60, nearly 30% of women feel dissatisfied and 32.6% feel self-conscious about their bodies. 45.5% of teens report considering cosmetic surgery. 43.7% of women over 60 report considering cosmetic surgery. So this is, this is a market that's not only... Um, it's gonna grow, leaders, but yeah. all the way up to you know people over sixty. Social um, media, man. Social yeah. media. Everyone, everyone's giving false sense of uh, vanity is really yeah. in it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you're asking me about AbV for a long term buy, if you're holding AbV for ten years, 
um, Botox and Juvederm, which is the filler, um, is going to blow up huge. So I think it's a great 10 year buy. That's all. Yeah. I, I, that's, yeah good stats. Right. that's good stats. That's something I didn't consider actually. That's really helpful. Sabrina, I agree. Those stats do make me cringe. Women are women effing rock, but, uh, Hey, we're in it to make some money. And if, uh, they produce a product that can make, uh, make women feel better about their bodies. Why not yeah. ride that wave? Yeah. Hey. Like I said, it's not just women, but that study that I found was pretty much women focused, but there's plenty of men that also do. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. We can just look at John Travolta. Um, moving yeah. on. <laughs> With that being said, Dalt is announcing that he's going to have some Botox for now. Yes. Yeah. He's already has That's that baby face. He's going even babier. I need, to, I need to get rid of these fine lines. Like you see when I... You won't be able to, yeah, his forehead will not move anymore when he's speaks. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, what's his name there, too? Calvin Klein. That guy has so much filler in his face. Jesus Christ. You mean Michael J. Fox, right? Calvin Klein? That's who you're talking about. By the way, Funny enough, I did review. Netflix. Yes. I did review the 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 yeah. movie uh, Back to the Future on the Real Boys. So if you are looking for a nice, fun movie review show, I do have a podcast called The Real Boys. You can search it on Facebook. It's a great podcast with about eight other podcasters, and we review our top five movies. So he's just the podcast you know that. mogul, ladies. Yes, he I do. Okay, name anything you like, and he does a podcast on it. More than likely, um, <laughs> I do want to make a little announcement to the group. Um, I got a great news yesterday. Uh, three of my podcasts. The Real Boys, that's R-E-E-L Boys. Uh, my podcast, The Investing Yourself, the Digital Entrepreneur Podcast, where I interview entrepreneurs about their jobs and their life and how they became entrepreneurs. And The Feel Better Show, another movie review show that I do live on Saturday with my friends, are all in the top 10% of podcasts around the world. That Let's means go. out of 2 million podcasts, I'm in the top 10%. But even more, I'm, since my business is podcast production, one of my clients is in the top 3%. That's right. You've guys seen him on the show before. Mr. Lloyd Ross, the money mentor, his podcast, Money Grows on Trees, is in the, the top. The millionaire Lloyd Ross. The he's millionaire been on Lloyd Ross. show many times. Not yes. this show, but in the group, yeah. In the group. He's been yeah. uh, a great member. His show is in the top 3% of over 2 million podcasts. So I'm just very happy. I just wanted to share that with you guys, a little Congrats. win that I had this That's week. Awesome. Um, yes, now we're moving on uh, to, uh, we're going to jump into the book of faces or the, uh, the Facebook, yeah. Facebook as it's Dude, called. I almost fell out of my chair when I looked at Facebook's earnings. Like I literally They're almost- so powerful. They're so powerful. Uh, it's ridiculous. Like Look at that $10 numbers. billion. Dollars. Like what? How, what? <laughs> So, yeah, you can go ahead. I haven't looked this up at all. So, <laughs> yeah, um, net income was up um, 100% year over year. Uh, the only one I think that beat them in FANG was Google, which was up 139%, I think, over the last year. Um, extremely, extremely powerful. Um, only them and Google have billions of users worldwide. No other company has billions of users. Um, they are extremely powerful. Everybody uses them. 2.7 billion monthly active users. Uh, the only real knock on this, and I had this uh, conversation with somebody in in the group in the comment in a comment section when Facebook posted great earnings, uh, is like um, it's like where do you go when over 33 percent of the planet uses your products and services? And it's kind of like they're running out of people to um to market to like uh, one day they will have 7 billion users monthly active users and at that point where's the growth when you have everybody so they are in need of some the big a word acquisitions uh they are going to start swallowing people whole expect that hostile takeover of tiktok <laughs> that is going to happen, going to happen. <laughs> um, i can see them taking some more augmented reality companies yep. over as well yep Expect a lot of VR stuff too. They already have the Oculus Rift. Um, expect they have Instagram. More, yeah. yeah. Expect some more. Um, They'll probably buy Snapchat. Yeah. Well, they already tried, but Snapchat said no. They said to go screw themselves. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Just, just raise, add another zero. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the zeros. How many zeros yeah. can you give? And they got how much? 
they got sixteen billion dollars on hand. They're like they're good. For those of you listening, how many of you own Facebook or a, are that want to buy, it, or how many of you want to buy Facebook or considering it? Yeah, let us know in the comments down below. I'm just uh, how many of you? How many people own this stock? It is um, a little pricey to let it, you know. It is, but it's gone up a lot. Like yeah. if, if you they were at, they yeah. were really undervalued at January of this of this year. They were everybody else in fang was rising and facebook was kind of just stuck and sliding along and they had the best 2020 i think out of out of most of the other fang fang stocks so they were like this company was trading under 800 billion tesla had passed them um they were trading very very light yeah. now They're, they've come fully valued to where they should be which is about 1.1 trillion um so yeah i think it's fair now but they were super cheap like this was a steal in in january at like 268 a share yeah yeah they're up uh 33 and a half percent this year so Jesus. year to date yeah and so we got uh, adam who's going to be selling pow for facebook which is a wise decision uh facebook is just going to keep going we got sabrina who said she wants to buy it so good yeah. to go on you and then we have someone saying that they own some facebook stock yeah, this is uh, yeah, their balance sheet is super super healthy too. Hopefully they got in early, yeah. But yeah, it's if you buy this now and you hold it for five years, I mean, you're probably gonna be pretty happy. Five years. Well, I, I can say because I, I I've talked with a lot of entrepreneurs, they use a lot of Facebook's uh, ads, and I think that's where they're gonna be getting a lot more of their revenue coming in with the Facebook ads. Yeah, people yeah. paying on that, so they're. I guess the acquisitions, of course, are going to be acquiring other companies because they have the money, but they have a nice revenue stream with their ad, uh, ad they buying. They make a ton of money off of like video views and stuff like that, right? Just popping ads in those in the videos, like videos that have millions of views. It's crazy, yeah. It's really, yeah. It's really so crazy. They make they're making a ton of revenue for for very. I mean, you look at their their revenue; almost half of it is profit. It's like. Twenty billion dollars of revenue, and then ten or twenty billion dollars in revenue, and ten billion in net income. That's like unheard of That's for insane. a company to have a fifty percent of their revenue as profit. You know, uh, I, I I wouldn't mind a percent of that profit. I'm telling you now, uh, yeah. I can make that can make some good investments with a percent of their profit. Um, yeah. What else do you guys want to talk about? Do we want to show Tony's, uh, anything else? Do, do you want to do portfolios or no? I, I currently only have your portfolio. Uh, Dalt wasn't, uh, kind I, enough can, to send. I can tell you mine. There's only four, four stocks. In there. Okay. Let's go. Let's hear your, uh, let's, let's break down the portfolios that you guys have. Well, I have like, yeah, let's bring up. I have too many. <laughs> can, I, can I, can I, can I type mine in here in the private chat and you can, yeah. I'll, I'll share it. Uh, in the private chat, it won't show pick up. Pick it up? No, but can you pick it up from the private chat? Like snip tool it or? Yeah, yeah, I'll do something for it. Okay. I'll get a picture there. So we'll talk about Tony's stocks right now. This is what Tony has. You got, you starting us off with Vanguard. You got Microsoft, Apple, another Vanguard. Wow, uh, we have you... 100 comments already in this. What? Is yeah, everybody's real? loving it. We got 23 wow. people watching. I love all your faces. All right, We're up at least 50% from last week. Uh, yeah. Just to use some stock talk. Oh, 24. We just got a new place. And yeah. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at Tony's. Uh... So this is my, yeah. So this is my Fidelity account. This is my largest one other than um, like 401k, but I don't control anything in my 401k. So, um, you know, I have this one. I have Acorns and Public, but this is one that I really invest most of my money in. So anyways, go ahead. I can't really see what. So we got Vanguard or VXUS. We got Microsoft. We got Apple. We got VNQ, which is Vanguard something. We got Bank of America. You got Invesco, the QQQ. QQQ yeah. We got another Vanguard with VYM. We got Charles Schwab, US. And then we yeah. got Vanguard VU. So my so I, I did reveal my portfolio last year and I did have some different things. I had a VIG. Uh, which is a Vanguard dividend appreciation ETF. Excellent ETF, but I got rid of it and I'll tell you why. And I had SPYG, which I also got rid of. Um, SPYG is pretty, almost very similar to VLO and it covers a lot of the same stocks. So I wanted to trade in SPYG and pick up QQQ, which I just picked up recently. That's why I'm only up pew, pew, like 
I'm only up like nine percent on that. I think. Yeah, you're nine point four seven. You're nearly nine point five. Uninvested in that, but um, that's one I'm going to definitely add to the most, along with VLO. Um, and then I I got rid of VIG because I really wanted to focus solely on just a couple dividend ETFs. I had too many, so I just narrowed it down to SCHD and VYM. And those are two that I've been hitting really hard and adding to those every single week. Um, and I'm, you know, it, I'm not saying it's perfect portfolio. Everyone has their different strategies, but my thought process is I wanted to be diversified and I wanted to pick up a few really great companies. So I picked up an international ETF, which is going to be my lowest holding because international ETFs always underperform the U S ones, but I'm going to add to that every week as well, but not as much. Um, I like real estate. I like having REITs because I like the dividends from them and I like hedging uh, with some real estate without actually having to own real estate. It's my way of buying a house without <laughs> having to deal with all the problems of buying a house. Which Such I as actually. always getting outbidded. <laughs> I do have a lot of cash that I'm saving in my, you know, my bank that I'm trying to buy a house with, but it's so hard right now. Um, and, you know, and so where was I at? So, yeah, real estate. My high growth ETF is QQQ. That's the one I'm going to use for potentially will be my high growth ETF for NASDAQ, tracking the NASDAQ. And then my bread and butter butter is VOO. That's my largest holding. Mm -hmm. um, and every single thing I own, I'm up on, fortunately. Uh, I'm not as much, I'm not up as much as I would like to be on everything because every week I dollar cost average. I don't, I don't really lump sum invest. I did lump sum invest into Apple, Bank of America, and Microsoft. I bought all of those with one lump payment or some in investment, not payment, but, and I haven't added anything to them since I bought them. So I am up pretty significantly on Apple and Microsoft because I got them at really good prices. Um, so that's what I have. Yeah. So. Give me a second, Dalt. I am just saving your uh, portfolio that you shared with, with me putting it into the, uh, the folder here. Uh, where is it? There we go. Yeah. I think, uh, all in all between fidelity public and acorns, I'm at just over $30,000. Um, and then my 401k on top of that, I'm not really sure exactly what I have in that, but it's more than all of this. So, all right, I'm just going to remove this cause I don't want people to see what I have on my screen. Cause it could be embarrassing. Uh, where's this? Where is that stuff? It's, uh, it's Botox, uh, quotes, isn't it? Botox <laughs> quotes for next week. Yeah. I'm getting some Botox guys. <laughs> How come you don't have a podcast on Botox, man? That's what you're missing. That's probably the only one. you. <laughs> Cause I don't know enough people in the <laughs> Botox industry, but here we go. We're bringing up adults here. He has 60% stocks, 40% cash. And his stock layout is DocuSign, 33% MasterCard, 3, 32.6% Google at 25.5% and Compass Pathways PLC at 8.9%. So I am super, super conservative in 2021. Um, I am holding a lot of cash, 40%, a lot of money. Um, and the reason for that is I am getting ready to uh, wind down into 100% cash at the beginning of next year. Um, with that being said, I am pretty steady. Uh, initially, when I had built this portfolio, I had MasterCard and Google at uh, at carrying significant amount of weight in the portfolio. And recently, DocuSign has taken off. And so it has now become the biggest um, whole, the biggest uh, weight in the portfolio. Um, there wasn't that much money in it to begin with, but it's just it's just gone um, parabolic over the last few few months. So it's taken now the top uh, the top spot. Uh, Mastercard and Google are doing well. Compass Pathways has been down. I think I'm down fifteen percent in Compass Pathways. Um, and it's just been riding between, um, 33 and 39 bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for the last two months. Um, 
I'm willing to hold compass pathways until the end of the year. And when I end up selling off a lot of things, um, compass pathways may stay. Uh, I need to wait till um, phase 2B trials uh, become public, which is in December of this of this year. So I'm really waiting on that. And for anybody who doesn't know, like everything else you, you should know, MasterCard and Google, obvious. DocuSign is who is the market leader in online sig signatures. They control over 70% of the market. Compass Pathways is the market leader in uh, the psilocybin um uh magic method. mushrooms yeah. they, they sell magic mushrooms if you to break it down yeah for tr treat for um ptsd for resistant depression um so they're going through clinical trials right now where the product is safe and now what they're doing is they're battling um traditional farm uh, phar pharmaceuticals so they're working their way up to big to the big names they have outperformed all the low level um prescription uh, drugs um, in, in solving mental health issues. So they're going to be working their way up to going up against higher and higher ones. Um, the, big, the big guys like Zoloft and so on and so forth. So, uh, it's pretty, it's a pretty small market though for the mental health, but now, um, they have a bunch of other treatments for, um, trying to rewire the brain for obesity. I think I, I saw. And so they're spending a lot of money building a lot of um, building a lot of uh, warehouses uh, for more clinical trials. And they're also like a full like a full stop shop. So um, it handles your before care, your actual um, your actual trip and then your your actual come down afterwards. So it's like a full stop shop. So I'm going to be going to Compass Pathways facility in a few Yeah, days. right. <laughs> um, if I can have a safe uh, magic mushroom ride. Residential, yeah. yeah. That's the other side of it is once it becomes a residential. Um, uh, so do you, do you recommend anybody buy any of these? Sorry, holdings rec now? recreational. Do you recommend anybody invest in any of these holdings now? Uh, DocuSign, yes. MasterCard, yes. Google, yes. Compass Pathways, only if you can go long. Yeah. So you're going 100% cash going into next year. I'm very scared about the uh, the Fed switch. Uh, so I was reading I was reading up on a lot of articles and I'm disappointed in you. Man. <laughs> no alcohol, 100% cash, no dog. He's going to go what on a blind doing? spree. We're afraid. I'm We're afraid. Investing podcast. I'm you afraid. Have yeah. Invested? Uh, I will be. <laughs> um, and I, and I did go, to be honest though, I did go hundred percent cash in February of last year and that saved, that saved me. So my, my timing has been pretty good. Yeah. Um, but you would have got it all back in months. I would have got it all back in yeah. months. But I was able to but go you don't know that. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. I was able to go in and buy stuff really, really cheap. And yeah. I followed, um, I followed in Bill Ackman. Uh, I'm, I'm a very big, big Ackman fan. Um, and I've wrote Bill Ackman fan, and I've wrote a uh, an article on his closed end fund as well. And when he started shorting the market, I I took that as a uh, as a sign that I should maybe um, drop some 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 holdings, and it ended up paying off. Um, but next year is just the only thing I'm really concerned about is the Fed the Fed switch. So as I was saying, I've been reading articles, and it's seventy per, uh, percent probability that Biden is going to keep Powell on. But I just I just kind of feel like he wants to clean out everybody from that yeah. Trump. Uh, now, did Trump appoint? Did, yeah, is that a, a Trump appointed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's gone. Yes. He's gone. <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's so bullish for capital markets, though. He's so bullish, and the reason why the market is like resilient right right now is because um, he 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 committed to buying the index in the first place, and he's he said he's not going to raise rates like till through twenty twenty three. But the big wild card is, is he's not even the Fed in February of 2022 unless he gets reelected. So is it a, does Biden have control over that? Yeah, it's an Biden, election? yeah, the president sets it. The president. Okay, so it's not an election; it's just no. an appointment. It's a it's a president appointment. Yeah. Okay. Elected by the by the by the president. <laughs> the president casts the only and the, the only sole vote. vote in the whole thing. I want you. I'm voting yeah. for you. Yeah. There you go. And so I'm, I'm just very weary um, that he's going to throw a hawk in there and interest rates need, need to rise right now. Um, and that, that would be a huge shock. So if Powell stays, I think I think it'll be good. So I, I got to really watch how 
how I wind, um, wind out. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'm just going to, I'm going to continue holding everything probably. And just. You're, you're pretty much safe. You have, you have Apple. I'm up overall like 30%. So, you know, whatever. If it can take a small hit and still recover. Even if it drops 30%, I'm just going to buy even more. Like, cause then I'm at zero again. And I'm just going to keep buying at the price I originally bought a lot of this at. Who cares? But like I said, I dollar cost average. So I would really be up huge if I didn't do that on these ETFs that I own. Because they've just got, done nothing but go up pretty much. Yeah. Um, if I just put, if I took maybe like five grand, if I put five grand in all of these ETFs last year and did it that way, I would have huge profits right now. Or two years ago, I mean, when I did that. But um you know, it is what it is. Who can't really tell the future? So, but you can keep... tell the future. The, the only can. reason I talked to you is because I thought you could tell the future. I can on certain things, but okay. not on this. Phew. Yeah, I like I like to reduce risk in uncertain times. And yeah, Powell yeah. is just so bullish, and I think we've all we've all been riding Powell, and we're all we're all really holding on to the fact that interest rates will never rise. Um, and I think I think if there's a switch. Uh, there's going to be a real bastard in there raising rates, and I don't. I don't think. I think you get mortgage defaults. It, it's bigger than just the stock market. If, if it rates could, rise. yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is the reason why I don't. I'm just going to wait and hold everything, regardless what happens, is because you should have an emergency fund and don't invest money that you need anytime soon. Like I don't need any of that money anytime soon. Knock yeah. on wood, because I have plenty of money in cash. So it doesn't really, even if it falls 50%, I don't care. Like it, it, does, it doesn't really matter. I plan on leaving that in there for 20 years. So, or more, 30 years, whatever. So it doesn't really matter. And that's the key thing I want to stress to everybody listening is only invest what you can afford to lose because the market could drop 30% tomorrow. And if you need that money, if you're planning on using that money for something in short term, you're kind of screwed. You don't want to, you don't want to be in that situation. So. Only invest money you need. I don't need any of that money. I'm sure you're in the same boat. You probably, I mean, it would suck to lose money. Obviously, I wouldn't be happy, but you know, I don't, as long as it's not something you need in the next couple of years, yeah. just let it ride. So, yeah. Unless you're investing in AMC and you're up, <laughs> you sell everything. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to close out the show. Tony, why don't you let them know where they can find you? Uh, Stock Bros podcast. I'll put the link in there. I you can check out. Um, I'm gonna put my links because I know someone talked about fractional shares. I'm gonna put a link for public so you guys can get some fractional shares. I love that app. I don't have a lot. Truth, truth be told, I'm not gonna lie to you. I use that a lot for referrals. I I do have like a thousand dollars in there, but I don't really use it too much. I'm just gonna hold it. You know, I'm not going to lie. I use it mostly for referrals, but it is. But at the same time, you're not at the same level that most starters have. Public is more for the beginners. You're you've moved on. Your portfolio is at a huge amount. So obviously you're going to use public to help them help our fall, our, our group members learn the basics with public. And then when they get a chance, they can go off to fidelity or yeah. to, uh, Ameritrade and all that. Or so you it's can fair. use it as a second account and just like, for whatever, like, um, like you use it and you yeah. can tell your friends, Hey, use my yeah. code, get, get a, get a $5 yeah. stock or something like that. So that's yeah, great. You get a free stock. I get a free stock. It costs you nothing. So we'll do that. And um, obviously you can find me in the group where you do this every Wednesday and don't forget to sign up for our emails and uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. All right, Dalt, where can they find you and your magical financial tips? As always on the blog, um, always in the group as well, sharing a lot of articles. I shared an article before this video as well. Every Wednesday there's an article I send out just before. Uh, this one was on a closed end fund, um, one of the best performing ones, BST, the BlackRock Science and Technology Fund. So I'll kick it back up to the top of this group after uh, the video. 
and also uh, my own podcast, which I've been doing now for the last three weeks. Uh, it's more so geared towards just everything I've learned, uh, myself and my business part, everything we've learned in business, um, starting up marketing, how to generate track traction, understanding the sales process and just all the ways that you have to go up and down in the um, in the business world. So I, we started doing that and uh, it's going pretty well so so far. We have, we have a long way to go before we hit. Uh, top ten, top ten percent in the world. Though. Yeah, I take you. You have access to the podcast mogul. You just start a podcast without him. Okay, I understand. There's no love for me. I understand that. Oh, I'm gonna just leave. I'm just leaving. I'm gonna move. <laughs> All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, the podcast mogul. Feel better. I'm the host of the show. I keep these two in line and really disappointed with this one uh starting a podcast without me but you can find everything you, uh, about me at investinyourselfpod.com if you're interested in starting a podcast and not trying it on your own like dalt you can uh, you can check out my website feelbetterinc.com book a call free 30 minute call i'll help you start a podcast uh, uh just because dalt it didn't want to do the call i can't believe you started a podcast without me i can understand tony he started it way before you knew me but still you betrayed uh but ladies and gentlemen this is the show we love doing this for you so tomorrow you'll see a link uh no not tomorrow tomorrow you'll see a post from tony asking you about what stocks you want to see in the uh the show next week we'll have that voting going on the the link for the uh i'm, I'm losing the email list the newsletter will be in the uh, comments as well a new post yeah, for that cool. as well yeah to keep you guys going uh we love your faces thank you so much for being here thank you for tuning in we'll see you next week this is stock dirty to me have a great day <laughs>